this is, this is, this is. Well, dude, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Rob Castillon. That's it. Yeah. So you, you uh, pronounced it and you pronounced it better than most people again, man. So thank you for that. Th- yeah, I got it wrong. You know, when I first read it, I thought it was Castellon. And I was like, that can't be right because, you know, the two L's, it's a Spanish name. Mm-hmm. My uh, I took one year of Spanish in junior high. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not I'm not super fluent, but uh, I try. I try to pay attention a little bit. Uh, welcome. Thank you, man. This is a this is a treat, man. So thank you for that. So those that don't know, we're going to get, of course, all into it. But you are the founder, the the, the owner and operator of Wiretap Records. And um, you also do you have a new imprint on the label. What's that called? Yeah, no, uh, we started about a year ago. A uh, g- good friend of mine. Um, we started a new imprint called My Grito, My Grito which is a little bit. Cool. Yeah, which is a little bit more, um, you know, aimed to help, you know, helping you know, uh, Latinos and Chicanos kind of in music and stuff. And, you know, we can kind of talk about that, but that launched, uh, about a year ago or actually not a year ago. We're coming up on a year in September. So cool. you know, less than a year ago. Excellent. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, just, I just was reading over some of the, the, the stuff that wiretap has been doing. And I just was blown away by the amount of releases you guys have. It's so much, uh, over 90 releases in seven years. Yeah. That's that's pretty yeah, amazing. It's, it's that's insane. how I, for one, like how the hell can you do so many releases? What's your release schedule? Is it like, do you do you have a release every week? Is it is it like a few things a month? What what's that situation? We'll get into the history of how you started and all that, but I'm just blown away by the sheer <laughs> magnitude. Yeah, it it varies, man. Yeah, so the, the first few years wasn't like that. The first few years, obviously, was maybe five, you know, uh, second year, it kind of just increased it over, over time. But, um, you know, luckily now with, um, you know, things kind of moving forward and kind of progressing and actually kind of picking up a little bit more, like we've been blessed, man. And, and, and uh, you know, we, we're probably averaging 14 releases probably a year, you know, and again, this is combination of physical, obviously, and, um, some digital EPs and whatnot. But I mean, mm-hmm. these are, you know, I, I still consider EPs and, you know, and singles as releases. So, but there's constantly, obviously, I think last year from July through November of last year, we had a release uh, every single week um, through every, you know, throughout the whole year. For So it's kind of, it's it's crazy because you, you think that during the pandemic, we'd be kind of scaling back, but it actually got busier during during the pandemic last year. So I, I don't know, I don't know what I have to tell you, man. We just kind of, kind of just dove into it last year and kind of it's been picking up and, you know, we're approaching I think we're actually we just uh, put in the order for ninety one um, uh, the catalog number ninety one release ninety one uh, last last week so yeah no it's uh, it's crazy how 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 much it's grown. What's the thought process behind doing so much volume? Uh, you know, I I think it's kind of one of those things where like uh, if I'm excited about something. I try to run with it, you know, obviously within my means, if there's a budget for it, if there's something that's going to fit in our schedule, I go with my gut, man, you know, and I try to just say, you know, what? if people need to hear this and I like it and I go with it and, and let's say, let I tell the band, let's put it out, you know, um, luckily I think, um, the bands we've been working with are all think the same way, you know, they're constantly kind of, you know, churning out content and songs and singles and whatnot. I think we kind of, I found a good batch of bands that have the same kind of mentality that I do. Mm-hmm. And we're all about just getting content out there, whether it be a single or they're constantly recording, you know, so I think they kind of get it. I'm being fortunate. A lot of the bands kind of get like the, the model of constantly having to have content, whether that be a video or a single or not. So yeah, I think that's kind of the mentality behind it, man. Yeah. Also, I think bands have finally kind of realized we can't just put out a record and let the record label promote Absolutely, it. Yeah. You have to promote yourself. Everything you do, you got to promote yourself. And, and same okay. with shows. Shows, I mean, it took bands so many years to realize, oh, we should promote the shows we're doing. Because, I mean, even MXPX, was, we were out on, you know, it was late. It was the, um, I would say it was probably like late 2000s, somewhere in there. And and just the shows were kind of like not as good. And we we realized, okay, we're not out here promoting each show. And so when we started promoting every show, when we came back strong, uh, you know, 10 years ago or so, uh, we, less than 10 years ago, to be honest, probably like seven years, seven, eight years ago, 2013, right. uh, we, we realized that was one of the biggest things was we have to promote ourselves. That's why we started doing like promo videos for a show. We would do that for every single show we ever did. And 
And I think bands nowadays kind of get it. You know, you got to do your own promotion. You have to work with somebody. You can't just let somebody run with their ideas. And one, either it's not going to get done or the people are going to do all the work and then feel, I don't know, not feel good about the fact that they didn't have any help. Uh, or three, you know, well, so, so nothing's going to get done. They're going to do all the work and things are going to get done, but then it's not a, a good team. Or like right. the third option is, everybody works together, everybody's happy. I, I yeah, feel like, sure. I mean, what you're doing seems to be working. You know, it, it's hard because when, you know, when you, when you put out so much stuff, not everything's going to hit the same or, or whatever. And it's just, you don't always know what's going to happen, but I think just, just keeping it going is, is the main thing that's going to help. Yeah, no, that's the, yeah, that, that's exactly, I think I, yeah, everything you said is exactly true, man. Like, I think just keeping content going and not only from just a handful of bands, but having multiple bands doing their thing. And, you know, there is a, that, that sense of, you know, community from the artists that, that I've, you know, compiled over the years. And I think, you know, I think having constant music coming out is great, man. You know, from a fan standpoint, like, I love it, man. You know, having something to work on, you know, this isn't, you know, wiretap is 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 obviously consumed a big part of my time. You know, and of course now my grito, but I mean, dude, it keeps me keeps me keeps me occupied, man. You know, I tell myself <laughs> I gotta keep I gotta keep doing this as long as it was fun, and it's still fun. So yeah, yeah, it's been great. Everybody, you know, that has some sort of hobby or something creative that they love to do. I mean, it really sure. Even if it doesn't make you money, it's something that you love. So it doesn't even matter. I mean, that's why I got into music. I wasn't doing it for yeah. the money. It was just. This is what I love to do. And so, yeah, I love that idea. I love the, the, uh, the vibes. Uh, I'd love to know, 2014, what, what were you feeling? Why start a record label? Yeah, I know. That's always the, uh, the question. Like, um, and, and, and it was never supposed to be a label, you know? Um, I think I, uh, I, I told my wife, like, you know, you know I, I think I just turned 35, maybe, or something like that, you know? And I don't want to say it was a midlife crisis, but I was like, in that time, we were like, what am I doing? You know, like now's the time to get stuff done. You know, you're like, I'm not getting any younger. And it was kind of just a bucket list type thing. I told my wife, like, I think I want to put out a seven inch, you know, and put out a seven inch 45 record and kind of be done with it. You know, so she's mm -hmm. like, how much is going to cost? <laughs> you know, and of course, <laughs> you know, as long as it's not dipping into our savings and, and whatnot. So uh, found two, uh, two local bands. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of pre preface that by saying like, I, I, I worked, you know, in, in radio at the time, I actually still work in the entertainment industry. Um, but I was working at K rock, um, uh, LA station, radio station here in LA. Um, and by huge all station, means, one of the, yeah, big, of I mean, huge for MXPX for sure. Yeah, no, of course, man. You know, obviously they, they, they spun you guys, you know, numerous times, you know, and I've got, you guys played a, like, you know, you guys played Wiener Rose and that kind of thing, right? I think yeah. you guys played Wiener Rose and a mm -hmm. handful of other shows too. So, um, so 12 I was years of that, huh? So what were you doing for K rock? Um, I started as just like your normal kind of entry level, uh, doing band drivers, you know, going to shows, um, doing the promo thing and kind of slowly ease my way into, um, more in the sales marketing side, integrated marketing. So was doing that for a number of years, for about seven years, um, you know, in, in, in that, in that particular role and by all accounts, loving my job, you know, mm -hmm. obviously going the perks like, you know, working in radio is great. You know, you get, you know, get to go to free shows, you get to do stuff and by all means, by all accounts, having a great time. But part of me just felt like I wasn't in touch with like independent music, you know, like I grew up going to shows and stuff and doing that. And, you know, I was going to shows and going to see bands like, you know, Alabama Shakes or Cage the Elephant and which great bands of course right like these are you know bands that are that are that are amazing but didn't feel like i was you know i wasn't going to shows i wasn't really kind of doing my you know i got i didn't feel like i wasn't contributing to the scene that i grew up in you yeah. know um so uh, you know again going you know going back to what you know telling my wife i think i want to put out a, four, a seven inch and be done with it um so um i found two local bands um that i had kind of just been kind of just you know keeping in my back pocket um, one of them actually was, um, I know you had Jason from Audi Karate on uh, yeah. a few episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the bands that I approached was, uh, Audi Karate side project called Indian school. Um, Indian school was a side project, um, which is basically Jason, Audi, which is basically, Indian school, basically uh, Audi Karate minus Jason. Okay. Um, when, uh, Audi Karate disbanded in, I think it was 2006, they started Indian school. Um, and then that was a side project that they did. So. 
uh, reached out to Art from Audi Karate and, you know, I said, hey, you know, put it on seven inch. Would love to have you guys as, you know, on a split with, with another band. Um, and, you know, found the other band, a uh, band called Watch for Horses here out of, uh, out of California, kind of indie rockish kind of thing. And that was it, man. It went off and running, you know, and of course made the rookie mistake that every, every, you know, small independent label owner does and pressed like three different variants, 507 inches and, you know, being, cause I thought I was going to be my, my, my only one. So I, I right. went all out, you know, way too many, um, way too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I'm almost sold out of that one. Yeah. Um, but that was it, man. You know, it sold fairly well and, you know, I was able to recoup my investment and, you know, and didn't want to stop, of course, man. So here we are seven years later and I'm still doing it, you know? Wow. Okay. Where do you go from there? So, so what was the first couple releases you, you did like full on releases and, and yeah. what, what's the most challenging part about releasing a record? Like, what do you, what do you got to do? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, right. that first, that first, first year. So, you know, a lot of it, it was kind of just getting reintroduced to the scene again you know i was i was you know been i'd been out of it and not really been keeping up with the scene and what was what music, music in general so a lot of it was diving in and and reading the websites again diving into punk news again diving into like you know the websites and whatnot and kind of just getting 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 into the scene again going going back to more shows and a lot of that is is kind of just you, you got to do your work you know mm-hmm. you got to keep going to shows and and being active because when you start a label in general like you're not getting submissions and when the submissions come, they're not great, you know? So it's a, you got to do your homework, you know? Right. So a lot of it's pretty, was pretty bad early on, you know, but, um, what is yeah. it about that? Why, wh- why don't good bands submit? Cause there's just the, that's the way the world works. <laughs> it's like vegetables yeah, no. don't taste good. Cause they're good for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, but we, we, you know, we got a few handful, you know, and a lot of it was when we first started, like, one, you have a limited budget. You can't put out everything that you that you love, right? Um, and two, right. like, you know, you're you're literally taking your chance with an unknown band. You know, a lot of bands. So, um, we we put out, a, you know, the first few releases we put out, we we worked with a band out of North Carolina called Wolves and Wolves and Wolves and Wolves. I know that's a lot of wolves. That's a lot. Um, but yeah, um, those guys. We, we put out a seven inch with those guys that did fairly well as well. Um, we worked with a band out of Milwaukee called Avenues. Um, that's like your spirit you know, pop punkish kind of like, um, you know, standard kind of pop punkish kind of like fat records type stuff. Um, and then the fourth release we actually put out was actually, uh, Spanish love songs, um, their debut record, uh, giant Sings of blues. So yeah, I've, I've think, had them on the podcast yeah. as well. I've had so yeah, like, exactly. geez, I've had so <laughs> many people, Scott lamb, Brent Watersworth, uh, Brendan Schultz. Yeah. Uh, it, it's yeah. not on purpose though. I mean, I didn't realize they were all connected to wiretap until, Oh, you're on wiretap too. Oh, but, uh, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, I would check. You got a lot of good bands, a lot of great, really unique sounding artists. So, I mean, that leads me to the question, what, what makes you sign a band? Like, how do yeah, you get signed yeah. to wiretap? Like what, what's the, con- what's, what's the common thread? Is there a common thread? Is it just solely based on your whim? Which is cool, but yeah, <laughs> it kind of it, it kind of is, man. You know, like <laughs> I, yes. I, I keep going back. I keep going back to the fact, like if I dig it, if if you know, just like when you when you first hear a band in general, like you know, put aside of being a, being a label owner, like if you hear something, you're like, dude, I I dig this. This is this is cool. I like it and get excited about it. And I keep having that. I keep sticking to that mentality when I first get you know send something and I dig it. I kind of obviously there's more factors that go into it. You know, like you know the label's still a business and you still try to obviously try to look at other factors of course like does the band tour and does the band have a social following so there of course there's there's a lot of that that goes into it after but i mean initially if it grabs me hooks me and i think it's a good record i i explore it you know um mm-hmm. of course you gotta you know talk to the band and see what their what their goals are and if they align with what your goals are of course and you can make it work great but again i keep just going if i dig it i dig it you know and it it varies because like you know I, i'd say most people kind of think of wiretap as like a pop punkish kind of you know whatever you want to call it, like punkish label you know mm-hmm. but we've put out records that are that kind of lean shoegazy or you know that kind of lean most plus hardcore we've worked with like the casket lottery you know bands like that but i mean i think they all kind of fall within that window you know of slash quote-unquote punk you know mm-hmm. um but again you know i think punk keeps you know uh, 
keeps redefining itself, right? Like I wouldn't be opposed to working with a hip hop album, you know, if it made sense, you know, like if, if that's what kind of, you know, I was feeling at the time, then I've, I've liked to think that I'm kind of just going with my gut on what I think I like, but I think people will like, so mm-hmm. that's going to kind of been the model, you know? I guess that would be like the, the positive spin on what Epitaph is doing. Um, they're just changing yeah. like MTV, you know, stopped playing music because it wasn't pop. You know, yeah, totally. <laughs> it was all reality shows at some point. And of course they ended up losing, but everybody lost at that point. But yeah. back to the Epitaph, I mean, what are your thoughts on, on how different a lot of their releases are? They still have their classic releases, but yeah, all the new stuff seems to be hip hop, all like SoundCloud yeah. rap kind of stuff. Yeah, you're right. Um, I, again, that, I think for me, um, if you like it, you like it. (laughs) No, not really, man. Like I said, like that. And and when I said I I, I would work with a hip hop artist, but I think it still has to have that common thread. You know what I mean? Like if it was a hip hop artist, I was like raised on punk and he got it, you know, like, you know, you take somebody like Travis Barker, he comes from the scene, obviously like he's evolved now into what he is. He's a brand now. Right. But I mean, like he gets it, you know, but so if he came across an artist that kind of got it, and I came up, you know, listening to MSPX and listening to, you know, bands like you guys and, and bands that we associate with and, and whatnot. But I think I think it kind of just makes sense. You, you kind of have to, uh, you know, I think it just would have to like click. Yeah. Know? And I think and I think I think the audience and band fans are savvy to that. And if they see an artist, like, all right, this this guy is a hip hop artist, but he, he gets it. So I think it's it, it's hard to explain. You know, I think I know what you mean. You know, it, it, it's it's yeah. good. It's good. For one, totally, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> but it also has like, that, that like, common thread of punk rock somewhere in there. Oh yeah. So, but what Epitaph's doing and a lot of other labels do, like, I don't blame them. I don't like, obviously, you know, s- s- think that they're changing the sound for a particular reason. But I mean, you know, um, I think everything's got to evolve to to a degree too. You know, I think mm-hmm. a label like Epitaph has the luxury to take those chances, or I might not have the luxury to do that and kind of alienate my my core audience right now. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, but, that's, that's the know. thing is you have, maybe you have an audience, you can tap into some of their audience that's looking for the stuff they used to do that they're not doing as much, but you guys are yes. wiretap. So, I mean, there's all these, the world is a big place. We can all, we can all work together. We can all work separately, whatever it is. But I mean, I think there's enough people <laughs> that, you know, it's just about finding those people and them finding you. That's the hard part, honestly, is connecting yeah. in today's fragmented. It's like, oh, the internet you can you can reach the whole world well sure but there's barriers everywhere on the internet in in a weird way that we don't see we don't see these barriers but there's a lot of suppression that happens so finding people is really the challenge i would assume you know from your standpoint you've struggled with that um, with social media posts and and getting you know promos out there what's your main like how do you get the word out mainly or is it not a one thing? I mean, of course, it's not one thing. But if there was something important or the main thing that you'd use, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, no, um, it's you know, it's it's still obviously I don't want to say a struggle, but like it's still a struggle. You know, something just like I said earlier, like mm-hmm. sometimes an artist kind of hits and some and and doesn't. There's another release that you think is going to go off and be huge, and it doesn't quite hit the way you hope hope it wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like we brought on. Um, uh, Mike at Earshot Media, who handles our, our, our PR for us. Um, and we've been working with them for a number of years now. And, you know, again, that's another part of the, the puzzle that you, every band, label, everything, you you need PR. You need somebody mm-hmm. on your side that that's out there waving the flag. And, you know, he's been a big help with getting not only the label, you know, kind of, you know, bigger bigger uh, visibility, but also the, obviously the artists and getting, getting them good looks and whatnot. So, yeah, you I know, see his well, emails all the time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, it it takes a you know as I say it takes a team right to build. Yeah. But I mean, wiretap essentially just is myself. But you know, I was you know I, the first few years I did it myself. You know, trying to do PR myself, but that's not easy, man. It's not an easy yeah. thing to get people's attention. So well, um, even aside from PR, just even just straight up sales and and sure. you know getting people to see that you have a, a new album ready for sale like that's hard right like do you use facebook ads do you use google yeah. ads do you use all of those kind of things available or how savvy are you with with all that yeah i'm i'm somewhat savvy again again you know i since i work in in media and, and marketing you know i do have experience with some of that stuff um the only challenge part with that is that again budget wise and you know we don't have the luxury of having a, an extended marketing budget for every release so a lot of it is just having 
you know, getting stuff that I'll use the word organic, but mm-hmm. having the bands create organic content and constantly do, you know, sharing stuff out there. So, um, you know, I, for the level that wiretaps are right now and, you know, the fact that we're having this conversation, you've heard of wiretap and is, is I'm humbled by that. That's that it's gotten big enough now where people have heard of it and it's getting the recognition, you know, that, that, you know, the bands are getting recognition. So the fact that it's that to that level, I'm mm-hmm. stoked on that, man. You know, hard work um, paying off. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You know, so, I'd love for it to be my full-time job and have it grow to an epitaph size type size, of course. But I mean, like the fact that, you know, that it's, it's where it's at now, I'm, I'm totally happy with that. Sure. Sure. Maybe you just need, like, maybe there's a p- missing piece of the puzzle that will help you push that over the top. Like maybe it's Absolutely. finding a partner that that's doing, you know, for me as a, as a bit, everybody thinks I'm like this big entrepreneur entrepreneur or whatever i'm not i'm an artist i write songs i i like to do things that are creative which i guess is the entrepreneur part or whatever and i have you know like artwork on on hoodies and stuff like that but like that doesn't mean i can know how to run a business right Right. (laughs) so uh i'm sure i know how to run it more than some other people but like you got i find you know with my team like my business partner tom chichilla and and uh you know and the team goes on from there there's so many people helping out what MXPX does. Yeah. Um, I can only imagine how hard it is to run a, a record label where you have not just one band, you have, you know, what, 20 plus, I don't know how many bands you have right now on your yeah. roster, but like a lot. Uh, that could get just devastatingly overwhelming. So how do you, how do you, how do you run your day to day from not driving you crazy, especially because you're going to, you know, your day job and then you're doing this, yeah. At, do you do most of your work at night or what's your day to day? Yeah, no. Um, luckily, you know, now that I'm working remotely from home, my day job. So I do have a little bit of luxury to kind of, you know, work, work from home during the day and whatnot, you know, of course. But I mean, um, yeah, early on, a lot of it was, you know, uh, you know, I, I, when I was driving in, into my commute, um, a lot of time was, you know, don't tell the CHP that I was a lot of it is listening to music on the road and trying to send emails, you know, during my off time, you know, during my breaks when I like, you got to do work, you got to do whatever you can, you know, like that's the DIY, DIY spirit, right? It's like figuring a way to get it, get it done. Um, working on the weekends, you know, uh, working, you know, after I put the kids to bed, you know, I got two little ones at home and, you know, being a full-time dad, being, you know, husband, you know, and having the day job, it's, you got to find time to make it work somewhere. So, um, luckily now, like I said, like, you know, a lot of it is just, we're all on our phone all day long, right? You know, a lot of it is, is, is messaging with the bands and communicating with them on a daily basis. Um, but sometimes like, I wonder myself how I find time to, <laughs> to make it all work, man. Yeah. You know? so. I mean, it really does take communication to make anything successful, any, any kind of yeah. creative adventure, business adventure, venture, adventure. Yeah, it is an adventure, but yeah, you know, I was thinking about TikTok. like they have managers that, uh, for their TikTok. uh, celebrities right they have managers that'll email and and like make sure that this artist this tiktok artist has yeah you know here's the content you know this these are trends that are happening right now on tiktok if you do a video like this i'm pretty sure it's gonna go viral you know like it's just like they help yeah their people out you know their celebrities and that's a newer thing like that doesn't that's that's not something that's really been a thing that's happened in uh any of the other social media platforms you know facebook doesn't call you or send you an email and be like let me let me help you out like uh anyway just it's just funny how things are constantly constantly changing but like the fact that you have to you you have somebody as big as tiktok realizing that it's very important to keep in contact with your biggest stars and in, in your case it would be whoever you're in contact with each band uh point person or whatever um it it's how the world works it really is so for those listening yeah. communication and i am a terrible communicator but i think the podcast <laughs> has made me made me a little bit better at it but <laughs> but uh that's the thing like uh you're like one of those ladies in the in the mirror doing her makeup in the car on the way to work but you're actually <laughs> in, instead of putting my makeup on i'm um um replying to emails or you know i'm you know, like if I got, you know, my release rate on Spotify playing and something comes up like that I, I like, or I'm like, oh, this, what's this, you know, like I'm digging into it and, you know, I shouldn't be doing that while I'm driving, but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I, you, you got, you just, just like you need to be communicating, you got to be paying attention. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of what has weighed in my favor is that I'm constantly paying attention. You know, it's what, like, 
is, yeah. you know, is, is, is what, you know, what's, what's out there and what's coming up. Yeah. You know? What, where, what is it for you that, that makes it worth it? What's the, where's that dopamine rush? Where's that, that, uh, that moment that you're like, like as an artist, when I come up with like a song or when we really, maybe it's the releases. I mean, where yeah. is that for you? Early on, I guess it was, you know, <laughs> it was the physical part is receiving you know, a record like, yeah yeah getting an order that first order in right and be like oh crap cool i've sold 20 records of, of a record you know and yeah. being excited about that it's always baby steps it's like it's the next kind of you know the goal i guess right um early on it was like about selling records and the physical and and you know shipping out a hundred records and being like damn I, I spent you know seven hours packaging records in, in my garage you know mm -hmm. um and then early, you know, later on, as we, as it started to kind of grow and a lot of the artists started getting more notoriety and recognition and getting playlisted and getting picked up on, you know, playing on radio and things like that. It's all that stuff, man. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, I don't want to compare it to like, you're a dad, I'm a dad, you know, is a lot of times these bands are, I'm like, you know, the label dad, you know, it's, yeah. it's it is, it is that, you know, um, <laughs> label but I mean, daddy. It, it, it is, it is kind of that, that, you know, that proud, proud dad moment of, of yeah. having a band like you know, get picked up and playing punk rock bowling or playing, you know, whatever festival or playing, you know, or getting, you know, play on the radio or, you know, you think, you know, that, that premiere on whatever website. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, like right now it's just, it's, it's a lot of that. It's just, you know, every, every moment I'm proud of like every band that when they accomplish something. So you're almost that's, part, that's, that's, part that's, manager yeah. in a way. Yeah, totally. Um, um, what about playlists? Do you, how much time do you spend trying to get, music on the playlists like say spotify or yeah uh we do you know part of part of the campaign you know we whenever we put out a, a release you know we do obviously push the playlisting and obviously try to you know i don't want to say it's the only goal but obviously playlisting is does help with obviously with the release and 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 uh, a lot of times it doesn't always get picked up you know like mm -hmm. it's really weird because no one's got the, the no one's got the formula no like, it's not I never guaranteed did that. yeah yeah you know, so, but I mean, I remember the first time that one of our bands got played, I said, it was like, oh, I'm, you know, dude, I was like, this is amazing. This is, you know, now it's taking off. Like this band's going to blow up and it doesn't always happen that way. You know, like you, you can get picked up on like a new punk tracks or a punk unleashed or something like that and have it on for four days or five days and then it's gone, you know? So it's like, you really have to kind of use that window to kind of, you know, um, push that out and ride that wave, if you will, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so, but I mean, yeah, you know, we spent a lot of time obviously trying to get every release um, playlisted. Um, we also do our own um, playlist on Spotify called Punk Radar. So when you can't get it, you know, yourself, you make your own, right? Or when you can't yeah. get it picked up. So we, we made our own, you know, it, it's growing kind of modestly. Um, but if people want to follow it on, on Spotify, it's called hashtag Punk Radar. So, cool. you know, it's That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So obviously we have our own artists on there, but we sprinkle it with uh, obviously other other labels, you know, that, that we admire, you know, and, you know, try to support the scene like that. Yeah. It is different than it used to be. I mean, MXP ignored Spotify and it's streaming altogether really until after we released our self-titled in 2018. I mean, can you imagine we didn't even like pay attention to Spotify before that. And so we're kind of paying the price a little bit on, on some of that stuff, but like the history and the algorithm and all that matters big time, but like playlisting, um, I mean, it's how a lot of these labels just make all their money from playlisting. It's not real. There's a real difference between playlists and play plays and I think organic plays like organic a, a, an plays, actual yeah. person, even though it is an actual person, I guess sometimes on the playlist stuff, but like for, for the, I, and I don't understand it that well, people so if people listening take this with a grain of salt but uh but you know just from my understanding it's just so strange that that money wise and and i agree you know you kind of have to go for the playlists right to get that get all those plays get pushed out there i, I guess it's a little i mean and, and then the organic plays is what you actually ultimately want which is the hardest right. to get because even people that don't necessarily, even people that do want to listen to, I want to listen to some punk rock, some wiretap punk rock, yeah. they may not get fed that wiretap punk yeah. rock, you know, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're exactly right, man. I think, and I think the actual, that's why whenever we first start working with a band, um, I explained to them like, yes, the playlist is great getting picked up on the official ones and, you know, on the, uh, the official playlist, but 
your goal and our goal should be is to getting people to follow you because that's when mm -hmm. um, on Friday, when your record comes out, they're going to get a notification that says, hey, you know, so and so has a new record out today or it'll appear on the release radar or their um, um, what's the uh, it's release radar. And then there um, um, there's a few other ones that will suggest like what's what's new based on your your past listening. If, they, if they're right. not following you, they're not going to get that notification. So that's why it's like the goal should always be to get people to follow you on Spotify. Again, but again, again, I, I'm no pro, you know, like, you know, we're lucky that some of our band bands have been picked up and yeah. somebody there has been, has, has taken, taken a note of what we're doing. But I mean, the more content we have you know, with PR and, and interviews and, and getting the bands out there, I think the better chances you have at like, getting people's attention. And that's, that's all we've been trying to do. Yeah. No. And I want to add, if I could, um, just a note about Spotify. You know, we talk about Spotify cause it's kind of like what a lot of musicians talk about, but yeah. there's tons of streaming services all yeah, of them are pretty yeah. good actually all of them are great so whatever you're using if you like it keep using it um and and like you know go like some wiretap bands on that uh yeah. whatever it is you know yeah. and, and a lot of i was gonna say a lot of no, artists no. will only post their spotify um you know link whereas I know it's, you know, it's just more work, but you know, if you had a link that had Spotify, Apple music, Deezer, you know, whatever, you know, all the, all of them, uh, that would make more sense. Right. So like things, little things like that, it's hard to build. You can't build it day one, but if you are an artist out there trying to release music, those are just, <laughs> you know, just little things, make it easier for people to find you, you know, because not everybody has Spotify. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that, that's why, you know, of course, everyone, you can't ignore Spotify, but there, you're right. There's, there's so many more out there. Like we love, like I, I particularly love Bandcamp, which is a you know, smaller one and, sure. you know, a lot more art, a lot more artist friendly. Um, but I mean, again, even Bandcamp has, it's, has its limitations too. And they're, it's very basic you know, and, and very it doesn't basic, have a lot yeah. of data, uh, analysis, sure. but, but it's, that's okay. Cause it's for really beginning artists. Uh, or, you know, it's for anybody, but, it, but it really is great for beginning artists, people that don't have a lot of tentacles out there. Bandcamp is a, a, a great spot. If you have a lot, but I think eventually, I think the way artists do make money and the way labels make money is, is like what you're doing. You're just, you're doing a lot of releases and you're trying to get them everywhere, everywhere, anybody yeah. that'll listen, any radio station. And eventually it just becomes a snowball and it gets some momentum. So people run out of money, you know, or they run out of energy or they just, you know, they don't have love for it anymore. But I, I think ultimately, no matter what you're doing, if you just keep doing it, the snowball effect will happen in some way because you're doing some cool yeah. stuff. It's just, Thank it's you, a man. hard, that. hard business. It really it's is. It's a grind, man. Yeah. You know, everyone asks me like, you know, how are you going to do this? How, you know, how, how long are you going to do this? So I'm like, you know, like I said earlier, like, I'm going to keep doing it until it's fun, you know? And until it's fun. Uh, it's yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Until it's not fun anymore. Right. <laughs> Hasn't been fun for seven years. Now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a grind, man. You know, like yeah. it really is sometimes just like you being in a band, like it really is kind of an, un, um, uh, I don't want to say like, it's, you know, like you put stuff out there and like, you know, like early on it'll be like, you're excited to share something and like you get, you share on social and you get four likes or you sell two records, you know? And like a lot of times, you know, like I'd be lying if I said like, I didn't think about quitting years ago, you know, but having mm -hmm. those little wins, you know, here and there kind of keeps you going, you know, but I mean, it's, it's a grind, you know, it's a very um, selfless kind of a, of, of a job, you know, or to mm -hmm. run a label, like anybody who runs a label, man, like, I guess you could say I, I went to the, the Mike Park Asian Man Records School of Running a Label, you know. Right. Like, what what's and, the you know, what's the uh, <laughs> the top line on that school? What <laughs> what's the first I thing know, you right? learned? What's what's the motto? Is like, you know, I don't know, man. Like Mike does a thing because he loves it, man. You know, like he's been doing it for years and Do it because he loves you know, it. There um, you go. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my my MO, I guess, for running wiretap too, right? I mean, that's kind of why I wanted to start rock city back in the day you know our, our yeah. my short-lived label that we did and and it, you know it became a thing that i would just release my side projects projects on or whatever yeah. but it wasn't it was a real label but we just i, I was never personally full-time you know and and even just the short amount of of uh work that we did on that i can only imagine 90 90 releases and <laughs> yeah. having to check the artwork and and i'm sure there's times where you've you slacked and you haven't 
proofread everything and you've yeah. learned the hard way, like, okay, I, I need, or maybe you still haven't. I don't know if you've maybe not oh, learned yeah. this lesson, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anything come to yeah, mind? No, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like we're, you know, you're running, you're, again, you're, you're running a hundred miles per hour and, and, you know, maybe listen to a test press and you're like, it's fine. You know what I mean? And, and then approving a test press and the band's like, Hey, so it's a little off, whatever, things like that. You know, like that only happened once years ago, but I mean, the one time that I can remember that I, that I fucked up <laughs> was, um, it's funny cause you had Hunter on from decent criminal, uh, on the last show. Yep. Um, we, we partnered with, uh, to put out you know, uh, their last record, uh, their last full length. Um, and we partnered with a, a label out of, um, uh, Belgium called beard of punk records. And, um, uh, we, we, you know, we had their catalog number, but I mean, uh, I put their catalog number as like BP 000 as a filler until I got their actual, uh, catalog number, sent it to print like that. So there's, if, if you have that decent criminal record that we pressed from two years ago it, and you look at the catalog number, it says BP 000 on it. I fucked up <laughs> and I, I totally took that. And I, I explained to the guy, uh, Bjorn who runs that label. I'm like, Hey dude, I'm sorry. I sent this to print without, um, getting your actual catalog number on that. So it happens. <laughs> you it know happens. What I mean? so, Ouch. Yeah. That hurts when you realize it and you're like, <gasps> oh. yeah, but it's kind of cool. Uh, right. Like it's kind of like a, yeah, it's kind of a misprint, right? Yeah. It's so. a misprint. It's like baseball cards. <laughs> and, it, and, it help, and it helps that the record's great. So, you know, you kind of overlook that, <laughs> that the, uh, it's got the misprint, but the, the record's awesome. So <laughs> yeah, 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 that's cool. That is cool. Little stories you live and learn, you know, and, and, that's the funny thing is, is it's never going to come up exactly like that. It's always going to be, yeah. it'll be this, a similar problem disguised in a different way. And so you have to be like, Oh, all right. Just gotta, was there any, was there anything like that for like MXPX in the past that you can think of? Con every, uh, every time <laughs> I never learned. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. No, so many things, so many things. Uh, there's typos in life in general. There's, uh, there's, um, I, I, I I, recently, like for the box set, I would say no, because we proofread that thing. Multiple people, Nicole, yeah. Tom, I, myself, proofread it. Every single lyric, every single, I like had to fix lyrics because, you know, you're getting lyrics off Google and Google is not correct most of the yeah. time. I mean, the, you know, they get most of it right and then there's always something wrong. So I had to like go through all of that stuff and like f make sure, you know, and not just the lyrics, but just all the credits. It's just a lot, you know, you're going through 10 albums plus all the, you know, the, the book, where there's a book that it comes with. So that was, uh, that was when I realized how important it is to proofread because when you like, there was times when I would like make a correction, send it, send it to the designer, come back, not correct. You know what I mean? So like, okay, something happened. All right, let's, it happens. Let's go back do it again and you know you got to go through and that tells me that even if i like proofread something you got to proofread again if it's something that important if it's like one record it's it's much easier but i yeah. think just the due diligence <clears throat> is um it's a thing that even if you do screw it up rob you can at least say i proofread it tw twice i think um i must have just been out of my body at that time or something because it makes no sense like i i try to leave it at at that leave it at that and i, I still don't know what happened. yeah I, and i still <laughs> screw things up not not super important things but i'll yeah. uh you know i'll forget something at the yeah, grocery store or something I, I can imagine that <laughs> you know that project the 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 box set is, is a was a beast man i can imagine doing that whole you know 10 albums you know but that's it, that's awesome huge. yeah it took quite a while quite a long time to put together Totally. But, uh, I mean, I, I would say for, for, if, if you do a, a collection at some point, you know, it's, it's really fun and it's hard, but you own all this stuff. I think one of the hardest things in putting together our box set was just the fact that we didn't own all of our records. We didn't have the yeah. rights to them all. Um, and that makes things really messy and really much, uh, a, not even just a level harder, but like many levels harder, <laughs> but, times uh, harder, yeah. I guess at the end of the day, money money solves most problems so <laughs> <laughs> that's what we just Tracking had to pay <laughs> out the ass for for all of them so yeah but uh but i think on your end as a record label man you could put together some really cool stuff and, and it's all about having something that's just not average having something that's a little different than what you've seen before 
uh, yeah. as far as physical yeah, products. The, yeah, the collection thing is, is, you know, I know it's coming up on seven years now for a wiretap, but I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I said I, I wasn't thinking about the 10 year anniversary already. You there know? you go. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how, how, how that pans out down the line. If we got a few years for that. Yeah. So, I mean, are you, how many, how often do you have to pivot your business strategy, how you promote, how you're working with people? Have you ever had to, I mean, you can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate, um, in 2000, I want to say 17 or 18. Um, we started doing uh, a record club, uh, which a lot of labels do record clubs, you know, like basically, obviously it helps offset costs for you at a time and helps fund races down the line but i mean you know the first year sold you know we got about we got a few uh subscribers but for the past two years we sold out uh we sold it in 2019 we sold it in 2020 uh and that's obviously I, i'll admit that that helped out immensely you know helping us fund records and you know and having that peace of mind of having <laughs> funds to cover cover costs of course you know but i mean um once you kind of know like all right that's covered you know then mm -hmm. that did kind of allow me to kind of focus my attention more on digital and marketing the record because like you know that's that's a big part of uh, sure i want to sell these records and not have them in my garage you know um <laughs> but the, yeah but the goal of it is also to help the artists grow right you know and it makes mm -hmm. me super happy when you know like i keep going back to like being a proud dad but i mean like having a band like spanish love songs so we put out their record you know early on grow on grow and and be on a bigger label you know and yeah. now they're on pure noise and you know they're doing their thing and it's awesome that's a that's a proud moment for me you know so, but that's, that's the goal too. It's not on selling records, but helping them grow their brand, not just, you know, the wiretap brand, because when their brand grows, the wiretap brand grows as well. So, yeah. Yeah. That's smart. That's really smart. And I think you're right about that. And I think it's something that I don't, I don't know a lot of people back when we were starting out realized there was a lot of labels fighting over a bunch of shit and it was just yeah. constant, but I'm sure it still happens. Um, but I, I, I love your attitude towards, you know, just your artists and, and I, I just, I want to hear more for sure. Um, what, so you obviously had, you found the record club uh, mm -hmm. and it finally kind of like was successful enough and, and it obviously hopefully will continue to be successful enough. So there's one thing you're like, okay, we got this, you know, is there, what do you think is going to be next? Are you guys working on anything else that could be akin to that? Like another service you're going to provide people? Is there, maybe that's something you should think about if you don't know, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think, no, you know, with um, MXPX, we're constantly having to like think of things like, you know, let's do this for a while. So we're between this world and the next live streams, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I think this past year was, was, was just exactly that, you know, it's like we all had to get creative, you know, like, um, especially with like live streams, you know, um, uh, we, 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 we only did one for wiretap during the pandemic, you know, just to kind of just everyone at home kind of thing. But I mean, I'll kind of touch a little bit upon my grito, um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, we can kind of go back to that, but we did some live streams, um, for my grito, um, uh, during the pandemic. And that's another uh, way of kind of reimagining and, re, you know, re redefining a, kind of what the label is, you know? So yeah, that's a new I know, service I know you guys, branch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I know you guys have been doing that amazing with, you know, when, when you guys do your, your live streams and those are great. So I think you kind of constantly have to be kind of giving your, your fans and your audiences different options, if you will, you know? So that's definitely something I think we're going to continue doing is live streams. And there's something that we're kind of working on for live streams. Um, I personally don't think that they're going away. You know what I mean? Like I think that, Everyone's like, oh, things are opening up again. Live shows are coming back, and they are. Then they'll be here, you know, pretty soon. And I think by the fall, knock on wood, we'll all be going to shows again and whatnot. But I mean, um, I don't think live streams are going to go away. I think that'll they'll just turn into something that we do kind of in addition from like a marketing and PR standpoint. Um, so you know, that's something that we're working on. Hopefully for the summer and fall, that we'll be doing some wiretap live streams. Um, but yeah, dude, yeah, you're right, man. Like, I. I I, I don't have anything off the top of my head right now that we're thinking of that I can maybe even announce, but there's definitely more from a physical standpoint, product standpoint that we're exploring to do more, you know, we don't really do a lot of um, apparel type stuff and like, you know, actual co-brand stuff, but we might be kind of dive, diving into more of that because, 
you know, again, I keep going back to the fact that like, it's just me and everything's in my garage and <laughs> yeah. I can't have a bunch of, I, yeah, I can't have a bunch of products sit, sitting in the garage. So, but I think we might be diving a little bit more into helping. Well, at some point it's got to move out of the garage, brand. right? Yeah, for sure. Maybe that's, so, that's where your next step is, but you know, I'm sure you're like, oh man, that's a whole thing. <laughs> I can't deal with that now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. Well, I mean, the future looks pretty bright. Uh, you know, it, like you were saying, um, the lockdown with COVID and the pandemic that that accelerated. If anything, it accelerated your your workflow and your the amount of work you had with with wiretap. I mean. Yeah. I guess, I mean, it kind of did for everybody, you know, in some ways, you know, anybody that was willing to work, right? There's plenty of people that sat around and played video games, or at least for a little while. And then at some point, you're just like, I can't play any more video games, you know, I just got to go yeah. do something. Well, I never did. I just was working the whole time, you know, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, and, and, and it sounds like you, you were even more, you know, you started working more, um, why is that? Like, what is it because there's less people working? And so like the people that are working feel like there's more to do. What's like, I'm sure, what's the, I'm trying what's to break the, this down a little bit. Yeah. That. Yeah. I don't know. I've always been like that. I think you're like me, man. Like I constantly have to have like multiple plates kind of spinning. Like if I'm, and I think that's what inspired me even starting wiretap in general. Like, I don't want to say I was bored, but I mean, I wasn't creatively fulfilled with just doing the nine to five, even though I was working at a, at a, at a fun job and yeah. enjoying my job. Right. But I, I just, I felt like I was, you know, I, I, at the time I, I had young kids, so I was, you know, busy being a dad and kind of just doing the nine to five thing and being like, I'm not creatively fulfilled, you know? So maybe that's part of what happened, but ever since I've been, I need to have multiple things going or else yeah. I'm bored, man. You know, like, I don't want to say bored, but I'm not like, I feel like I could, I should be contributing, you know, and the pandemic for sure. Like I think while most people kind of just learn to bake and do whatever they were doing, you know, to kill time. Like I was like, all right, I can't be sitting here doing nothing. And, you know, that's when, you know, my partner and I decided to start my grito and that's what's, you know, kind of, we launched a new label, a new imprint during the pandemic. And, you know, so, yeah, um, it's like you, yeah. it's like you're an artist writing a song. You, you, you come up with a new thing. I love that. Totally. I mean, and, and the fact that you have an artist mind, you know, you kind of, you, you, you think, you try to think how the artist think, thinks, even though everybody's different, each individual, of course, is yeah. who they are, but that's really important because people like, people like me don't like to talk to suits, you know, they don't like to talk to people in offices and at sky rises. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like, wait, did I take a wrong turn here? Like what happened, you know? And, and yeah. so like. I feel like you just, you, you symbiotically like really fit well with, with all your bands, which I think is important. I think it's great. Yeah. Talk about my Grito. I mean, uh, who's, who's your, what was your first release? Like what, what yeah, what's no, it like? What um, kind of, is it all Spanish music? What's it? No, no. And, no? and that, that's, that's, okay. the, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I think when I first tell people that, you know, like that's what people initially think, you know, but I mean, um, I, I partnered with my best friend, uh, Oscar, who I grew up with, you know, uh, so uh, for a number of years, he was coming in and supporting me and helping me with wiretap and coming to shows and even kind of helping me with like kind of more organiza organizational type stuff for the label and kind of helping me with like, you know, day to day stuff. And then it kind of turned into like, hey, what, what can we do that we kind of create from scratch? And I think during the pandemic, we kind of decided, hey, you know, what, let's start an imprint. Um, we both are both, uh, you know, Mexican American. We're both Chicanos. And, you know, I think that we grew up going to shows and even still now, man, I think you, you go to shows and, you know, a predominantly white male run punk scene, you know, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, obviously things are changing. It's, it's obviously with uh, people more aware of, of, of being more inclusive. I think it's slowly kind of changing. Of course, there's a lot of work to do still, but we grew up going to shows, man, and being, you know, the only brown kids in, 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 in that show sometimes, you know, yeah. obviously LA is different because like SoCal has obviously a bigger, um, Hispanic population. Um, but I remember going to shows and being like, I don't, I don't see artists on stage that look like me, you know, with the exception of, of the band that I mentioned earlier, uh, Adi Karate. I remember going to, going to show and seeing the, uh, the Vandals and Adi Karate opened up and I was like, Oh shit, there's kids that look like me on stage right now, you know? And that's, that's, that's what was, that was the mentality behind, um, kind of starting my grito is that a lot of these bands that, um, 
uh, you know, play shows in here locally here or the local scene um, have never had a publicist or management or don't, don't understand the whole algorithm thing or don't understand Spotify. And I just kind of felt like, you know, I could be helping a lot of these bands that don't have this luxury or don't have, don't have the budget to be paying for PR or paying for whatever, even, even, even if the record's great, don't have the money to pay for vinyl, you know, or things like that. So um, the first artist that we're working with is a band out of Garden Grove called 3LH. Um, they're kind of surf rockish, kind of psych, kind of punk stuff, you know, mm-hmm. um, very similar to kind of like DC criminal, but with a little bit more of a, uh, think, think link Ray meets, uh, like the misfits kind of thing, you know, if that's kind of a, uh, an accurate description, <laughs> you know, I'll have to check that um, out. Link yeah. Ray. They're called three LH, you know, and there really isn't a sound just like with wiretap. I, I, I never really wanted a sound for wiretap. Okay. Like, uh, you know, I think when I was coming up in the scene or whatever in general like my favorite label in the late 90s 2000s was vagrant um and i also i actually also interned for vagrant records in uh like 99 2000 so interesting um, yeah we uh yeah. We, we released an ep on vagrant well uh, my b- other band arthur yeah yeah I, I i probably i probably drilled holes in arthur cds for oh, <laughs> when I'm i sure. was interning there yeah <laughs> So, yeah, so I interned at Vagrant and, you know, just always remember about Vagrant is that they had a really diverse kind of a, a you know, sound, if you will, like I think early on, like, you know, face to face with Rocket from the Crypt, but Dashboard and Aquilantria, but like the anniversary, like it was always kind of just all over the place, you know, and that's kind of, I think, how I, I feel like Wiretap kind of has a sound, but it not really has a sound. Like mm. we're not like your skate punk label. We're not like your emo label. We kind of like, Kind of somewhere in the middle, you know, and I kind of felt like Vagrant kind of had that that same kind of mentality of of their sound, right? Yeah. Was that so, was it Rich Egan? Is that was that? Yeah, his that was Rich Egan and John Cohen. I want to yeah. say. Okay, those right? two guys. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember well, Vagrant. Vagrant was cool. Vagrant was cool. Totally. Yeah. Um, That's I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I I drilled a bunch of CDs and folded Arthur shirts and uh, <laughs> you know did all that. <laughs> um, but you know kind of how that makes makes sense with with my Grito. like the same way like my Grito doesn't have a sound right now like i think when we really think about working with the with the, with the band or in general for my Grito, um you know latinos are, are into a lot of different type of music man you know it's they're into punk they're into latin ska they're into you know you know traditional mix, mexican music but they're also into hip-hop there is they're into rock so i think it kind of makes it you know uh, it varies on on what what the sound is you know like yeah. latinos are into soul music too you know so it's like obviously that you know we are going to be working with the soul artists pretty soon but um my Gito's kind of its own thing you know and yeah. so maybe something that we probably couldn't do with with wiretap um kind of leads a little bit more um with my Gito. how brown do you have to be to get signed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the too man you know like we obviously we want to support and and work with uh, you know artists that are of 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 you know people of color yeah but i mean that's that's not doesn't mean that we wouldn't work with artists that that don't um celebrate the culture if you will. i think that's more important to us sure. you know it's like somebody like um i don't know you know in the soul scene like uh, somebody like um Nick Waterhouse, he's a, he's a soul artist that kind of, you know, plays fifties vibe kind of, but he knows the culture, man. You know, like he knows that, that Hispanics, Latinos, they celebrate the, the you know, the fifties soul kind of like vibe and Chicano soul. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, if, if it makes sense and it, and the culture is being celebrated, then we'll get behind it. You know. Now, do you have any Mexican music bands, like any mariachi band or anything like that, any <laughs> traditional or Not, punk no. mix into it or something? Somebody has got to do that. Like I know there's, El Bronx mariachi or whatever. Mariachi but, El Bronx, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, sorry. I get that. My, my buddy and I will we'll kind of, we'll ask that question because like, yeah, there is mariachi El Bronx, about it, but I feel like, you know, uh, every St. Patrick's Day, you have your Dr. Murphy's, you got your Flogging Molly. Those are the bands that obviously like people think of for, for mm-hmm. Irish music, right? Or for Irish, Irish Americans, right? Like what's, what's, what's Hispanic's band, you know? Like, yeah. is it Manic Hispanic? Is it Manic Hispanic? I it's all a joke. It's, I mean, I, I love yeah, Manic yeah. Hispanic, but it's like. Like, is it, is it Los Lobos? I don't know if Los Lobos represents my, my right. culture, you know, my, you know, my generation. So Los like, Lonely Boys? That, yeah, you know. <laughs> they so, represent some of my culture, but, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they're, so, they're I, very I blues like and different, you know, they're not punk rock yeah. for sure. Like, I feel like my, my, in, you know, in my experience, like, I feel like I do. I haven't had an artist or a band that represented kind of me in my generation. 
you know, that represented like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard to define it, but I mean, let's, let's know. find a punk rock mariachi band that's totally. from somewhere in East LA. There's gotta be somebody out there that's like, yeah, I've been, we've been playing for years. We just don't know about them, but uh, it seems like you'd hear about them eventually, but that's, that's a challenge. Somebody let me know. Yeah. There are a few bands. There's actually a band out of Texas, I want to say, called Piñata Protest. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's a there's a bunch of bands out there that are doing their thing. I'm just, you know, we're trying to kind of find those artists that, you mm-hmm. know, to, to work mm-hmm. with. But, I mean, Piñata, 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 Piñata Protest, I've seen them a few times, and they're they're awesome. San Antonio down there, they, they got a great scene. I love the punk rock scene in San Antonio, Texas. It's amazing. Yeah. It, Austin's great. Houston's great. Dallas is great. But uh, I feel like San Antonio for punk rock is amazing. They just love cool. punk rock there. So I'm sure you found, you you know, you've been finding bands in Texas, but San Antonio might be the spot. Yeah, we'll, we'll zero in on, on San Antonio. Yeah. See what we'll, find. well, is there anything else you want to, uh, you want to add anything we missed? What did we not talk? Did we talk about everything? I mean, I could talk yep. about record labels yeah. all day. I mean, just the the, the <laughs> fact that the 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 landscape is constantly changing in the music business, in the world we live in. I feel like you were talking about live streams and, and not going away. I totally agree. I, I've, I mean, we've already done ten. We have ten coming up, July second, but um, is our tenth. But I feel like it's going to go into, you know, au- the, the it's going to go into virtual reality oh, you know you VR, put on vr stuff yeah. vr yeah, yeah we put on the the oct what i can't oct something yeah. <laughs> I'm like, i don't know all the names of the things but i feel like it's going to go there you know ready play that movie ready player one have you seen that yeah ready pretty, player one yeah pretty insane movie imagine, yeah just but it's already you know haptic suits where it moves and you know you get shot with a laser beam and it you know yeah. pushes you down that'd be insane like, can you imagine like a, a world where we have you know you put on your vr and you can you can actually feel like like you're in the pit or something yeah you, know, you feel like, like you're in the pit you room. you can pick somebody up and throw them and they go flying through the roof and it, yeah. and it feels like That's it's real insane. but it didn't actually break your roof like it's going to be yeah. so much cooler to be in that suit than it is gonna, <laughs> to be in real life you know people are like i'm not going to work out anymore <laughs> Dude, in real life I, I stand in the back now so i think with this vr thing i think it actually i get into the pit now <laughs> how big are the stage the stage dives going to yeah. be just like all right stage dive mode doot, 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 and then it just like you hover <laughs> over the crowd and it's like yeah. slow mo motion i mean just anything's possible at this point we just saw yeah. logan paul versus mayweather and yeah. what like that's that happened okay anything's possible right so yeah that's insane it's gonna yeah, be I cool this to happen now man this, uh, i'm kind of vr punk shows need to happen now oh my god it's gonna be amazing you know mxpx is down for <laughs> it and we'll 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 uh we'll do it up dude We'll get we'll get all the wiretap bands in on it. Uh, it was fun talking to all your all your people. Course, I, I've talked to so many of them. Um, I wrote down. I got I was had taken days on audio karate, like yeah. you said, decent criminal. Although they worked with you guys, I don't know if you have a release with them or not. Do you have yeah, a, yeah. you do? Yeah, we put uh, out their last record. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Mercy music, divided heaven, moving in stereo, Spanish love songs. So many, um, and I think I'm gonna have. Um, what is it? Uh, love Breakers? Oh, nice. I think yeah. I have somebody awesome. from the yeah. Love Breakers our, our on. Our buddies out of the UK. Yeah, we put out their record coming up um, at the end of the month this year. Um, so, yeah, they uh, another great band that has that UK-ish kind of like, um, I don't know, I, I, I say it's like a modern day jam, the jam, you know, very kind of UK-ish kind of like, you know, influenced like by The Clash and very, very poppy, you know, not poppy, but a pop punkish, not, not like in a pop punk, skate punk kind of thing. Not, way, not American like, style pop punk. Yeah, yeah not American stuff. Like, like more like the police meets like, you know, like just good old, you know, rock and roll stuff from the UK. Um, they recorded with Davey from Sharp Shock, Davey Warsaw. Yeah, Davey, he's so, been on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, another, another, another connection there. Yeah, so that's great, man. That you're gonna have the guys on. So yeah, that's that's uh, excellent. So cool. is that your next release? love breakers yeah yeah that's coming up the end of the month this year um uh their record's called primary colors that comes out on june 25th um what else we got we just put out a new record from uh um toronto band called talk show host talk show host that is a now. pretty pretty solid record like if you know i try not to put records on uh, that i put out on my own album of the year list but 
this I'm, I'm gonna make an, exce- make an exception i'm putting that on my own <laughs> <laughs> on my own my own top 10 if i did um, I, it would just be all yeah if i had a record label it'd be all my exactly. st- stuff or it's all, everything i put out on yeah. my, my top 10 <laughs> exactly <laughs> Uh, and then moldy yeah, man, moldy they, roses is a new one too yeah moldy roses um they uh put out a, a, a their self-titled debut ep um a few weeks ago um you know really good orange county you know orange county band that's got you know punkish kind of you know emo-ish kind of pop punk influence we're really good you know three song ep so there'll be more from those guys hopefully by start of next year that we'll put a, a full length of them so cool a lot of stuff man you know um you know we have rec rec releases coming up from uh Florentine band called Auto Robot that's coming out um, next this hopefully this coming year. Um, just keeping busy, man. You know, trying to trying to put out as much as we can. You know, right on. All right. Well, tell everybody where to go online to follow you to you know your website. I want people to be able to get that, and I'll put yeah, it in the show so. notes as well. But totally, yeah. Now you can find us on all socials uh, at Wiretap Records. Um, WiretapRecords.com is where you can pick up all the physical. Um, you know, obviously, um, I mentioned the Spotify playlist earlier. Uh, hashtag Punk Radar would uh, help out all the artists and help us kind of grow that in general. Um, if you want to follow what we're doing on the side label, my, my grito, um, at my grito on social on everything, um, mygrito.net. Um, yeah, you know, trying to keep busy and hopefully everyone's uh, picking up what we're putting out there. So absolutely, I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you for all the support, man. Dude, love what you're doing, man. Keep it up. Thanks, right, Rob. Thank you, man. Cheers.